It is a new year, but COVID-19, it is also still very prevalent in our community. In today's Two Year Wellbeing, what the numbers look like as we start this new year, what to expect in the coming weeks and in the months ahead. Uh, right now with us is Cone Health Infection Prevention Medical Director, Dr. Cynthia Snyder. She's joining us. So first and foremost, let's just go right to those numbers. What do the numbers look like? So, you know, as we anticipated, we knew that our numbers for the state continued to trend up. And I believe um, just on January 2nd, we had over 9,000 cases of being positive. I know today's a little bit less. Um, however, these uh, represent probably closer to, we mentioned about 16 to 18% being positive of all the tests that are being done, which to me mentions that there's still far more people who have it that we've yet to test. And um, in terms of our own hospital system here um, at Cone Health, we have um, now about 264 uh, patients with COVID who are hospitalized uh, overnight. And that is a lot. Of our, and, you know, do we have capacity for more? We, we do. However, um, based on our uh, projections for the month, um, we, uh, we'll come to a point where it just feels like we, we do have a shortage and of beds available. Um, we have 265. Uh, how does that compare so that people kind of have some context to what it used to be or where we started out or where the mid part was? Sure. So, you know, when um, in the beginning of December, we barely just hit 200. And, and to us, that was a very big deal. You know, we at our main uh, COVID hospital, the census there is 100. And uh, then then a lot of the other patients get placed at our other hospitals at, in different counties. And what we've noticed is that, you know, we're not the standalone island, you know, so if another hospital system go, is unable to accept patients, we'll accept some. And then, and then the, we'll know certain rates are higher for, for instance, in Alamance County, or maybe they're um, a little bit, we see more patients with COVID who are, who are in our Reedsville campus. And so it's, it, it's impacting like all our campuses. And with that, I think the thing that's also challenging is that, you know, we have plenty of other patients that have other health concerns seeking medical care. So um, our emergency rooms are, are very busy and, you know, and we're really trying to work so that patients do not stay in the emergency too long who, or who would otherwise require to be admitted. Um, we've worked out different models to try to help uh, discharged people um, who can receive some of their care at home. So we have um, this, this care like hospital to home model for COVID patients. And then also people who are nearly diagnosed with COVID who may have worsening uh, out, risk of outcomes. Um, we have established this, this infusion clinic to receive um, a monoclonal antibodies. So um, We've created like these other aspects to help, you know, however. To help with the beds that you're seeing kind of diminish. So again, you said 200 at the beginning of December, 265 now. Correct. Where do you see that count going? So um, unfortunately it's accelerating. So we, our estimates is that it could be close to 400 by the end of this month. So in three wow, weeks. 400. Time. Right. Double what it was at the beginning of December. Correct. Okay. Uh, with those kinds of numbers, you are, like you said, you're trying to alleviate the need for beds. So you're doing kind of like a, um, like a teledoc or virtual doctor appointments for some folks who don't have symptoms that are as bad. Correct. And, or we're actually uh, trying to provide other therapies for them. So um, there, we've noticed that we've been able to give um, this uh, monoclonal antibody infusion and it, in certain groups, it prevents a uh, hospitalization. So we've been uh, been able to increase the capacity of doing that. And then some of our patients that are hospitalized and need to finish up their therapy of antiviral therapy, like getting remdesivir, they we also are able to provide that to them on an outpatient basis. Okay, so we're talking about different kinds of therapies to, you know, get people better. But of course, what everybody's looking at, you know, for the saving grace of all of it is the vaccine. So where are we with the vaccine? 
You know, that's a great question. So I know, you know, as soon as the vaccines uh, had rolled out uh, nationwide, statewide, you know, everybody, at least in healthcare was, you know, this is that glimmer of hope that we need. And next uh, is um, the next caveat to this is that hurdle of how do you vaccinate a large portion of the of, of our, your community as quickly as you can. So right now we are in the phase 1A, which is uh, vaccinating healthcare workers that work with COVID patients. And then we are about to launch um, the 1B phase, which is um, including patients who are older than, folks who are older than 75 years old will be eligible to get the vaccine. So um, we are working, uh, I know a couple uh, health departments have already started to implement that in the state of North Carolina. Um, we are close to uh, being able to uh, uh, be able to expand that to our residents in our community. So um, more information will be coming out in, in this this week. And I know you say close. Any kind of like estimates? So, um, kind of like definitely a good reality. <laughs> next next week for sure, and, and possibly Saturday. For the information on when that could happen. Oh no no. So the information will come out this week. So over the next coming days. But the intent is starting our vaccine clinics for folks who are older than 75 um, on Monday. Okay, that is that is really good news. I mean, and we know lots of people who are saying, when am I getting that vaccine? So at least we know that that's starting. Okay, so then the next you know question is, you know, once we think that we're getting this vaccine in place, this, that, and the other, right? How long are we dealing with this whole COVID-19 thing? You know, um, it, is definitely going to be here this year. You know, um, I, given what we know about the constraints of how much vaccines we have and how we would like to, to um, vaccinate the, you know, the majority of the population, um, we know that this will, the vaccine plan at least takes us easily through, through the summer, you know, and um, this use, when you have this novel virus in a, in a community, it usually lingers for a couple of years. Does it mean that we are still in the midst of always wearing a mask? Um, for now, yes. For now, do we still need to be very cognizant of where we go and making sure we're not in these close groups? For sure. As we have better herd immunity, which means people who have immunity by vaccination or have having had COVID and now are immune, you know, we want that percentage to be high in order to have enough protection for those that are unable to be vaccinated. So that process of getting herd immunity close to like 75 or 80% takes a very long time. Um, what I envision is that, you know, right now um, we have to do as much as we can in, in observing those three W's and really buckling down. We really need to do as much as we can in order to, you know, save anybody from getting the um, COVID in order to, and, and needing to be hospitalized. You know, I think all this help, like my healthcare system, as well as our neighboring healthcare systems, are all feeling the brunt of this. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. What do we all need to do? And you said, do what we have been doing and continue to do it. And do it to the fullest extent. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open things up to your questions. And this is how we do it. You text us your question. The number is 336-379-5775. And we'll be right back. <laughs> 